here we are, my home country, North Jerusalem. As you can see, just as beautiful as any magical land, where the trees are made of mint leaves and the grass is as sweet as candy cigarettes. Funny, looks sorta of like where we come from. Oh, really? And where do you hail from? Israel? Egypt? Oh, little Chinatown of Bethlehem? The Midwest. Haha, <laughs> yes, beautiful Detroit. Now stay close to me, children. You never know what magical beings you may run into in the forest. What are we gonna run into? Rodents of unusual size or Robin Hood and his merry men? Greetings, travelers. I am the devil. Holy shit! I'm no longer an atheist. Let us pass, devil! You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. If you want to pass through these woods, you're going to need to answer the question. Don't tempt me, devil! You know I was up late drinking holy Yule Moose with a splash of Jesus juice? I can barely remember my own name. Do you know the answer to... Super Nintendo... or Sega Genesis? Well, that's an easy one. Atari 2600. Hipster. Huh. Why, it's Sega! Of course. <laughs> well, somebody's on a Bubsy kick. You have chosen correctly. You may pass. It's Satan. Why do I get the feeling the right choice is actually the wrong choice? At least Santa Christ looks happy. <laughs> we <Wee>! naughty boy. <laughs> oh. What the fuck? Where's the review? Right. I'm in the review. Man. Don't know about what? The Passion of the Christ. I don't know if this is such a good idea. It's a great idea. It's been 11 years since this movie came out. No one cares about the passion controversy anymore. Right now they're too busy being mad at pixels. Yeah, but I feel like this could reignite the controversy. I'm just starting to get much less dog shit after my Man of Steel review. Well, take that as a compliment. Maybe they were sending you dog shit because they agree with you that the movie is dog shit. I'm about to get a lot more dog shit after The Passion of the Christ, then. Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ has one goal in mind, to show the final 12 hours in the life of Jesus Christ. Now, these 12 hours aren't so much about Jesus' message, or his relationship with his disciples, or the impact his words had on the world in general, but it's about showing how much punishment the body can take before being nailed onto a cross and dying. It's for those die-hard Bible fans that really wanted to see Jesus in Saw. And that attitude worked. The Passion of the Christ grossed $611 million against a $30 million budget. And it's not only the highest grossing religious film, but also the highest grossing R-rated film. Suck it, road trip! Nothing like a movie about the New Testament quoting the Old Testament. It starts off with a Bible quote, because we're not going to see much scripture here. It says 700 BC, but I swear I heard Muhammad Ali say that to Joe Frazier in the 70s. Here we have the last remaining cosplayer from Comic-Con. So lonely. Jim Caviezel plays Jesus, and something seems wrong here. I'll say there's something wrong. There's no way he actually said that! Do you speak Spanish? No, but... That's clearly not Spanish. Now you have something else to complain about other than the incorrect subtitles. Don't you hate it when you get lost on your way to Woodstock? Yeah, Jesus doesn't have much faith in these disciples since they've replaced the third one with Curly Joe Dorita. Hey, how many Jews does it take to light a room with candles? Uh, I'm afraid I don't know the punchline to this joke. I wasn't making a joke, I was asking a technical question. That's just prejudice what you said. These guys have the greatest beard stylings in history, but can't give Judas a bag that works? Five second rule is in place, that way the chocolate and those coins will still be good. He's working off all that acid he took watching Janis Joplin, or something else. Subtitles aside, this is either the devil or an Ingmar Bergman character wants to play chess. Lai Ah, Harry Potter reference, just seen that coming.
Why did they make the devil look so hot? This is sort of like the crying game, only if she turned out to have an actual snake between her legs. <sighs> Jesus may love animals, but fuck snakes! Seriously, fuck snakes! The mob is actually on their way to hunt down Frankenstein's monster, but instead they find Jesus. Not sure why they're mad at Judas, he's just doing what he was supposed to. Wasn't that the point of Jesus coming to Earth? To die for our sins? Not that this movie goes into any backstory or anything. Man again. Harsh! Nothing that a kiss on the cheek can't make up for. Hey, wait to take a bad day and make it worse, Judas. Yo, the... the Nash. in the shack. Since his stories in the Bible are much shorter than a standard movie script, slow-mo had to pad it out to feature length. Fun fact, this movie's actually 20 minutes without the slow-mo. Oh no, he hacked off the ear of Dorothy Valen's husband. Here, let's put that back. We want Jeffrey Beaumont to have a better week than Jesus. Now they're arresting him for other charges, like harvesting body parts up his sleeves. This movie is bluer than the blue bird of happiness scene from Follow That Bird. And what the hell, they couldn't even wait until the trial to get to the torture porn? <laughs> oh now, come on, this movie's much longer than that! Sorry, I, I thought I would put a cut in there indicating how long it would actually take this person to die. But then he missed incredible scenes like this! <laughs> the hell was that? Bloomhouse must have put this out. It explains the totally unnecessary jump scare. It has nothing to do with anything. People are pissed, so they broke up this production of Fiddler on the Roof. You know, it's good that they have them speaking another language other than English. It keeps it authentic. Anyway, back to Jesus Edison inventing modern dining furniture. Wait, what? You don't remember that from history? Jesus invented the chair! Look! Well, Nash caught it here. Ah, so thanks to Jesus, millions of families can sit together at dinner so they can silently ignore one another. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I prefer my Bible movies to be more realistic, damn it. Why isn't Jesus stuffing a bunch of animals onto an ark? Because it had snakes. Ah, if only he invented the beanbag chair. Then they'd be too relaxed to do any of this to him. I'm sensing more hostility. Shilafak. It blalach na. Considering the controversy of this movie, I can't really tell Mel Gibson wrote it. Sakadu! Okay, now I can tell. You know, I understand them wanting to punch Caviezel, but honestly, Count of Monte Cristo was pretty good. This scene goes on so long, I expect the Fiddler from Heaven's Gate to serenade everyone in a roller derby. Guys, guys, we're only a half hour in! That face injury makeup looks good, but for God's sake, save it for the rest of the movie! No, really, for God's sake, it's the fucking passion! Get it right! Is he finally going to say something now? Whoa, those are the words that demand a chest hair off. I think everyone in this room stands a good chance of winning. If Gibson cared so much about representing Jesus, why wasn't he involved with other movies about Jesus' life? He was! Don't you remember Forever Young? Uh-huh. Huh? I bet that slap felt refreshing after being beaten by those guards. Sorry, Jesus. You can give those puppy dog eyes all you want. This is still gonna be a more graphic movie than Cannibal Holocaust. I don't know why you're reacting so harshly to this. It's no more morbid than our vacation in North Jerusalem last year. You promised you would never talk about that. Yeah, but I didn't promise I wouldn't show it. There's something off about that devil guy. I mean, aside from the fact that he's the devil? No, no, it was like he was standing in front of us, but not really. There was something really questionable about that background. Who brought the portable television, children? Santa Christ has an inkling to play Toe Jam and Earl, and it's not because he picked up a foot fungus walking in these woods. We might have something to say about that. Mario and Luigi? So, wait, not only do the god and the devil exist, but video game characters do too? Wait, their names are Mario and Luigi? I've been calling them Horneo and Squeegee for years. We got word that one of you has declared himself the king. King which nobody in Nintendo Forest recognizes. If ever I Mario Mario. Mm. But Pop. <laughs> this is the Nintendo Forest? I didn't see any signs, except maybe of littering. <laughs> Who 
dares bring forth the beast with the Motorola 68000 processor, the foul stench of the Zilog Z80, with a library of over 900 games. I don't know what any of that means. Who brought into these woods the Sega Genesis? <laughs> Little do you know me or my companions, for none of them would betray dear Santa Christ. <laughs> you know, Critic, they might torture the information out of us. It was him! It was him! Santa Christ brought us the Sega Genesis! I betrayed three times before the cock crows! At two, Critic! Wow, man, I would have held out for at least five more seconds. Critic, how could you do this to your Santa Christ? We were going to have a picnic together. Instead of shooing ants off our picnic blanket, we were going to play It Came From The Desert. I'm sorry, sir, but I... I don't even know you. Wow. You're gonna need to come with us. Never! Let my friends watch their betrayal with their own eyes! What the hell did I do? You spoke ill of the movie elves. Even Nazi elves have a place in Santa's workshop. Okay, let's just torture him here. What? anti sagai bastards! Oh, good, there's no more of that. <laughs> oh, there'll be plenty more of that. Just like there's more flashbacks, too, this time involving Peter. I mean, I'm here, and I like. The Kakathani Thirothut. Little Tamma. Adoni. Peter then realizes he can't stand the sight of blood and gets the hell out of there. Either that or allergy season is really doing a number on his eyes. Meanwhile, Judas desperately wants them to take back the silver before his name becomes an insult. Well, that's unfortunate, but at least Judas invented the drunk homeless man. Who the hell are these little saints? You have no idea how right you are. <laughs> There's a lot that could be said about the Passion of the Christ, and I feel that one of the positives is at least it's better than Cabin Fever. Tell that to Dominic Dawson, the famous Jesus scholar who actually walked out of the film. Yes, but in his defense, he probably thought it was over. Look how underlit this entire first act is. Ah, oh, damn, if they hadn't taken Jesus away, this would be an amazing spot for a chair. There's the look of a man who is not in the mood to seeing always look on the bright side of life. Yet. Oh, hey, speak of the devil. Sunlight. Never thought I'd see that again. Wait, how long have those kids been chasing him? Why didn't he stop to beat the shit out of them? Not only does Judas have the strength to run hundreds of miles through mountains, but so do those damn kids. It's okay, Voldemort shows back up to get rid of him. See, he ain't such a bad guy. Aw, oh, but in order to do that, he had to kill a donkey first. That donkey was definitely murder. He better hang it to make sure it looked like suicide. Oops, someone didn't learn anything from watching The Gallows. Actually, Judas died pretty easily. For a movie like this, I thought it'd take at least two hours. Oh, uh, hey, must be Pontius Putin. Yes, and as we know, Romans only spoke Latin to themselves. When they were out of Italy, they spoke Greek, the international language. Another authentic fail, movie. That sounds like a nitpick, sir. What do you think we're doing here? Do you think those are the actual subtitles? La hen le hewet aved resha la tevna lelkom. I don't know, I'm used to the subtitles always being wrong on this show. Jesus is safe, for the spirit of John Woo soars above him. Given the controversy, I'm waiting for something else anti-Semitic to happen. Oh, what the hell, this movie happened decades before Hitler was born. Decades? At least two. Pilate offers Jesus a drink, but he can't accept because his mouth has been bruised shut. But he offers him a deal. Mm. Should have taken that deal when the game stands tall sucked. 
Not even Hedonism Bot has any inkling to help Jesus. Are you kidding? That's not Hedonism Bot, that's clearly Brentlefloss in drag! Whoever he is, he's entertaining enough to make Jesus himself fall right to sleep. At this point, I have no idea what Jesus' defense is gonna be. Ula Mashiach, Urame, Uhalel! Oh no, that's the ace up their sleeve! They know Pilate hates defense puns! But perhaps the crowd would rather release Yakov Smirnov than kill Jesus. This crowd loves Yakov's Branson-friendly comedy. No way they'd kill him. Except I don't think that's Yakov Smirnov. <laughs> ah, the kingdom of heaven will open. But a rapist is set loose on the world! And with all the controversy about how Jews were depicted in this film, where's the talk about the Romans being two-dimensional drunken barking brutes? Oh, what? Oh, sorry. No time for outrage. I'm distracted because Jesus is fucking ripped! If you think of this movie like Hazing, then this is a fantastic double feature with Revenge of the Nerds. Oh my god, I, I didn't think it was gonna hurt him. Have we gone too far? She may be upset, but deep down, she'll always have chair. Time to bust out a much harsher whip. They test it out on a table, and it breaks off a piece, but Jesus has another table they can replace it with. This is a movie where lovers of religion and hardcore S&M come hand in hand. The safety word is, ow, my fucking ribs! You know what they say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but... Um, that's it. I got nothing. This is gonna be the rest of the movie, isn't it? And bad subtitling. Oh, maybe he'll die quickly, like anyone would! <laughs> nah, just kidding, he's still alive. Yay! That or they're just whipping a pair of severed hands now. This is even disturbing Monica Bellucci, and she was an irreversible. Not Mark Anthony, however, is just there because he likes to watch. I feel like the subtitle of this could sarcastically be, just like in the Bible. Pilate's wife brings him a cloth, just like in the Bible. Turn him over, he's tender on the other side, just like in the Bible. You know what else was just like in the Bible? What? Oh no, you're not gonna cut to Mark. Yoshi swallowing enemies and crapping out coins. Not Sega. Sega doesn't have Yoshi carrying around a baby Mario's crying all the time. Oh man, that was so big, man. Eh, eh, that's so annoying. Eh, eh. I hated it, eh? But Santa Christ is hip with the children. They look up to me like a Generation X hedgehog chomping on crystal meth. Oh, thank God you're back. Yes, even though I knew it'd be gratuitous and awful. Just had to know what all that blood looked like. Santa Christ doesn't bleed blood like mere mortals, or surge like diabetic teenagers. He bleeds the tears of the trees and the sweat of nature's bosom. Actually, it tastes like maple syrup. That's it! I wash my hands of this sketch. Kill the guy! Critic! Critic! Just one more thing! Carry on, guys. Well, that's just gratuitous! How's it supposed to affirm anyone's faith in Santa Christ? Beats me. Or him, I should say. Back to the worst Neosporin commercial I've ever seen. Oddly enough, this only required about 10 stitches. Once you wipe away the blood, it isn't that bad. Ah, uh, this is just a scene from Uva Ball's planned biopic on Michael Bay. But there is good news in all of this. The devil has become a father! And he's given birth to... Popeye? Popeye is one thing, but is anyone gonna point out that they seem to have resurrected Richard Burton for this? Oh, what flashback is this? Is he inventing proper footwear now? <laughs> Since this was years before blood on the asphalt, images like this were used to keep the Romans from jaywalking. Even though he's beaten within an inch of his life, it was still nice of him to guard the stable. Until more dickhead Romans come along. 
Aspicite illum! Regem vermum! He's already wearing a crown of thorns. Why the slap? Is that supposed to hurt him even more? If anything, that's a step up! Yeah, there's no explosions in this movie, so let's make every piece of sand seem like it's laced with C4 and give it the sound effect of fucking bullets. I prefer Martin Scorsese's version of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, the version where the two of them bang. That's where the real passion is. They have to apologize to Pilate. There was a horrible incident at the church barbecue and there's absolutely zero napkins. Why even tie his hands? He couldn't raise his arms if his life depended on it. Pilate does not look happy. Ecce como! Alona sha! Nala de alcom! Kazolik! They haven't seen enough bloodshed already, so a fight breaks out. But hey, Jesus couldn't give a shit. <laughs> Seeing a bowl of water makes him think about the time he invented washing your hands before dinner. But for Pilate, it's because he's a major germaphobe. Anton Tehelon de Bainislave. Now, as punishment, Jesus must carry this 10-pound movie prop. It's always easy to spot Jesus in the crowd. He's the one with the giant fucking cross on him. Oh, this looks familiar. The same thing happened when Governor Blagojevich walked in the Illinois State Fair Parade. There's Mark Burnett again, taking a lot of notes for a Son of God movie. Nothing like having your faith restored by knowing for sure that it would hurt if your whipped body fell onto a cross. And falling onto the cross makes Mary remember back to when he also once fell as a child. Weird. Children never fall over. This moment had better be heartfelt. Oh, and me. Oh, oh, that Jesus. Still with the sense of humor. Oh, the crowd here is getting a better show than a Floyd Mayweather fight. Speak for yourself, this is taking forever! They should just put the cross in the middle of the town and get it over with! Hey look, it's the one person who has no idea what's going on and simply wants to water her plants. God, the last half hour of this movie has more walking than Jerry! Though I would like to whip Gus Van Sant after that film. Are the Romans just always drunk? I thought they learned their lesson after Tiberius gutted wine out of that guy's stomach. Well, this is sad. A father brought his son to get a person of interest autograph from Caviezel, but came at a very bad time. <laughs> to show his gratitude, Simon picks up the cross himself. <laughs> Not to help Jesus, but because it'll take the movie much closer to the ending. There's no reason this movie should be two fucking hours! I know why it's over two hours. <laughs> He falls over every 30 seconds, and it shows it to us in slow motion every single time. Even the actors have had enough of this. Whoa, you can show all the blood and guts you want, but leave the F word out of this. As punishment, he must carry the cross, like he was gonna do anyway. But slow down, slow down! They haven't finished building the set yet! Mmm, I know what can slow them down. <sighs> the movie Falling Down didn't have this much falling down! If only there was a chair he could sit on, that would be a load off! Speaking of flashbacks... What a not a merlecum. Hey, you know what other filmmakers are assholes? Who? Oh, come on, not the rest of- Santa Christ dies, another is reborn. Or at least I hope so. Honestly, I don't know if there is a god, so I'm really hoping this isn't the end. That was a stupid joke he just said. Hey, now remember, if it gets too rough, the safety word is crucify me. Oh, crucify me! 
Well, if you insist... He said it, not us. But Santa Christ is bleeding too much syrup to stand up. The only thing that will make him move faster is a stack of buttery pancakes. Maybe a side of bacon. Some eggs. Some coffee would be nice. Some coffee. Hey, Mario, you ever think we go too far with our torturing? The day that everyone finally realizes that Donkey Kong Country is far superior to Toki Goes Ape Spit is the day we stop torturing. But I don't know anyone who thinks Toki Goes Ape Spit is superior. Okay, well, I just like torture. Barnabas! Dear Barnabas, trade places with me! What? Why would I do that? Did we still crucify people here? They're called the crossovers. On the left cross is the three schmuckheads review of Blood Rain, and on the right cross is the cinema snob and film brains McBain. Yeah, that sounds dumb. I'm not trading places with you. I got raping and pillaging to do. He looks pretty bad. I think we're gonna have to kick him the rest of the way. Uh. <laughs> nope, I'm dead. Ho, ho, ho. Huh, that's never happened before. What do we do if they die before we crucify them? That's easy, Luigi. We have sex with it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thank God that's over with. Oh, luckily, we still got over a half hour of this movie left. Is Jesus dead yet? Nah, he's still flashbacking. With that kind of advice, is Mel Gibson some kind of prophet or something? Yeah, sure, he's a prophet. That's why he needs more shots like this. didn't fall this much in Lord of the Rings! Jesus has a look that says, Oh what, is the cross too heavy? Could you not carry it? Is it too fucking heavy for you, Simon? This guy doesn't care. Wait till the fellows at work here they met Jesus Christ! Unfortunately, this is a very bad time to tell his mom that it was him who broke the cookie jar when he was five. Also, he invented cookie jars. Speaking of inventions, we now know his greatest invention of all, delicious crazy bread from Little Caesars. Here we have Mel Gibson's cameo, because if he's gonna make the goriest religious film of all time, he's gonna hammer in the nails himself. So, uh, we're supposed to nail this Jackson Pollock to the cross? Holy Christ, you can see his ribs! In fact, that's not even a swear yet! I think we should make that a swear right now, on the spot! Proof once again that you can get away with torture porn as long as you just throw a halo in there. They have to dislocate Jesus' shoulder to get his arm to the other end of the cross. Luckily, he's in the hands of Mel Gibson, who can teach him to pop that shoulder back in in no time. Well, at least he won't fall over anymore. Wait, what does that say? Jesus of Nazareth as Rex Harrison? Now that I would like to see. Apparently, Caviezel was struck by lightning during the making of this sequence. That's when you know you've made a questionable religious film, when God is literally trying to stop you. He couldn't even afford good wine in the flashbacks. Oh, hey, those other guys up here to talk to. You know, if I was put on the cross, I think most of my conversation would be ow, 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 ow. Probably not this. It's like of a lack. The name is Pat Gesmas. Voila, voila, Almis Pat. After that, Jesus can't hear them anymore. Probably too much blood in his ears. A crow shows up to peck at the eyeball because why the hell not? They shoo the crows away because we don't want these men to get hurt. This takes so long that not only does it keep cutting to random shots of the sky, but also actors now playing Yahtzee. Leave it to the rain to ruin a perfectly good picnic. <sighs> I wish Jesus invented the watch, because I would so be checking it by now! Shh, we're about to hear Jesus' final words. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. That is, until God sheds a tear. He's totally crying. Mel Gibson knows him personally. Damn, Voldemort is screaming. I'll get you next time, Jesus. Next time. And what's that voice I hear? Truly, this man was the son of God. 
Unfortunately, they crucified him on December 21st, 2012, and they're destroying every model set in the city. Go ahead, stick a spear in him, he's done. And show it in slow motion so the blood sprays all over his mom and the guard. They gotta hurry up and bring him down. It's nearly time for the will reading. Whoever he doesn't like has to keep the crown of thorns. I gotta say, I did not expect this to be the kind of movie that would kill off its lead character. Oh, just wait for the twist ending. See? He's on his way to spread the love and wisdom that this film had no intention on focusing on. He is now the last Christbender. I never thought I would ever see them sequel baiting Jesus. Actually, to keep with the authenticity, they actually crucified Jim Caviezel. Think about it. You ever see him in anything else? I saw him in Deja Vu. I rest my case. The Passion of the Christ was controversial for a number of reasons. Whether it was for the allegations of anti-Semitism, the graphic violence, Mel Gibson's independent production, handling the film's budget, distribution, and marketing. On the other hand, the movie is a depiction of the sheer brutality that Christ suffered for our sins, only to come back and forgive all of mankind for what had been done to him. But on the other hand, it's an over two hour film where 80% of it is just a man being beaten to death to show the audience that crucifixion is bad and really, 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 really hurts! It's a film that shows a side of the crucifixion story that we've never seen, and in such detail, but without focusing on Jesus' message of hope and love. Again, it's a film of a man being beaten in so much slow motion that it dog paddles its way to 126 minutes. And look, if you're a religious person and this film gave you a spiritual experience, fair enough, nobody should take that away from you. But the same way I respect the experience you had, respect the experience I had of needlessly over-the-top excess, which tons of Bible scholars have pointed out as inaccurate, and instead suggest other films that talked more about Jesus' message of love rather than a snuff film of guilt. Well, we could have talked about the Danish Jesus porn, I Saw Jesus Die. What the hell is that? It's a movie about someone who saw Jesus die, and also saw him fuck. That sounds more uplifting than Passion of the Christ. Oh, it's no Sodom and Gomorrah, which had a talking monkey, and no chair inventing. Right? Everyone clearly knows that Jesus only invented Buddhism! Damn right! <laughs> Just kill us in the comments, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never working again. <laughs> Santa Christ, Santa Christ, we all love Santa Christ. He is Santa and Jesus, goddamn, is Santa Christ. He atoned for our sins, but he also likes pancakes. He saved puppies from a fire, and he also likes pancakes. He played bass for Aerosmith, reads the sick orphans too. He goes surfing in space and makes really good fondue.